What's up guys, I'm Lee Morris from fstoppers.com. ACDC recently reached out. They wanted to sponsor a video where I go over some of the new color tools in Photo Studio 2021. Let's get into it. If you're unfamiliar with Photo Studio, it's basically a replacement for Photoshop and Lightroom in one single program. And instead of paying monthly, you can just buy this software outright. This year, ACDC has added a ton of different tools and features, but they have really focused on performance and speed. The software now opens up 100% faster. It's 50% faster switching between modes. It's 100% faster while working with keywords and categories, 20% faster with raw decoding and performance, and up to 40 times faster with database performance. So I've got a few images here from the competition video that we did with Pi around a year ago. And I thought these were good images because I've got this model here with different color dresses and different environments. I thought we could have fun playing with the color of these dresses. Let's say you were taking some sort of catalog shot of a girl in this dress, but maybe the dress comes in multiple colors. You don't wanna to have to get her to change into a different dress for each of those individual colors. You can easily change the color of a dress in this software almost instantly. Let me show you how you can do this. This one's going to be particularly easy because this green dress is the only green thing in this scene. I'm in the edit module here, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on color EQ. And all I have to do is click on this icon here. And then when I click on the dress and move it up or down, it will change either the saturation, hue, or the brightness. I'm going to choose hue. And I'm just going to click and pull down here. And as you can see, I am changing the color tone. This is as far as it's gonna go this way. And then I can go up the other way. It'll probably end on red, yep. And uh, basically we are done here. Now, if I wanted to fine tune this, I easily could. I could go to saturation here. I could make it more red if I wanted to or less red. I can also click on the brightness and I can change how bright this dress is. Maybe it's a really rich dark red or maybe it's really bright. What if I wanted to actually make this white? I could do that. I could click on the saturation. I could lower it all the way. So it's just gray right now and then click on brightness. I could bring it down to make it black, or I could go up and make it white. Now, like I said, this image is especially easy because her green dress is the only green thing in this scene. This is exactly how green screens work. Most people don't wear bright neon green clothing, and so if you make the screen behind them neon green, it's very easy to grab that color and either change it or remove it from the scene. But what happens if you have a scene like this? This is a girl in a red dress that's surrounded by other red items in this environment. I'm going to try the exact same thing, but I don't think it's going to work. I'll go to hue and let's grab this. And as you can see, it starts grabbing all of the red in the scene. And the same thing's gonna happen if I go to saturation here and I start lowering the saturation. It's just gonna lower the saturation in everything, not just her dress. So we're gonna have to be a little bit more specific about pinpointing the exact color of that dress. I'm going to right click on this layer and just delete the layer here. And I think we might have to do some fine tuning. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. I'm just gonna right click and duplicate layer here. So I'm going to be affecting this top layer, but we'll have the original uh, layer down below it. On the left side over here, if I come down to color, you can see we have color wheel. This is a new module for this year. As I move this around, it's changing where it's gonna show up on this color wheel on the left over here. I'm just gonna click right here on her dress. And then what I can do is I can start moving this around and really start fine tuning what tones of red I want included in this selection. If I grab the center of this pizza pie here and pull it in, you can see what it's doing. It's showing me everything that it's grabbing. And as I pull it in, it's going to start removing areas that are not very saturated. You can see the dress is extremely saturated red. So you can see I can go very far and then it's gonna start eating into the side of the dress. I'm gonna back it off right there. Now the opposite is true if I grab the outside of the pizza and pull it in. It's going to start deleting out the most saturated areas, which of course are the dress. So I'm gonna leave that where it is. Now I'm going to grab the side of this pizza slice and start moving it around. And you can see 
from up here, it's eating into the dress right there. But down here on this one is where all of the oranges and yellows are. And you can see that's what all this is in the background here. So I bet if I start moving this, yeah, it's going to start removing all that orange out of there, which is perfect. So right now I've got a pretty specific selection on this dress and we can do the exact same thing that we were doing before. I can just move this hue slider to change the color of the dress. And you can see it's also changing the color of her arms here because her arms were reflecting that red color down below. I personally don't think this looks very realistic. So we're gonna have to use that duplicate layer that we had in a second. But let's go ahead, let's change this to a uh, blue dress. And you can see also that we've got some blue showing up in the background back here. We're gonna have to take care of that as well. It's also grabbing her lips. Um, but I think this blue looks pretty nice. It's probably a little bit too saturated. So I'm just gonna lower the saturation down a bit, make it look a little bit more realistic for the scene. And let's try the brightness here. Maybe darken it up just a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to click apply. So as you can see, I've got two layers. If I disable this one on top, you'll see it reveals the original layer below. I'm going to create a mask and I'm going to paint in only what I want here. Uh, I'm just gonna right click and I'm going to set mask as black. That's going to hide everything. And then coming up here, I'm just going to select a white paintbrush. I can change the size here. That's good. And I'm just gonna paint in with a white paintbrush this dress here. Now, as you can see, it's doing some weird things under her arms. I'm still seeing some of that red reflection from the red dress, which I think looks somewhat realistic because she is standing on brightly lit wood. So it does make a little sense. But when I put too much blue under her arms, that, that looks ridiculous. There's probably somewhere in between. So what I can do is I can, I'm just gonna delete this out. I can come in here, choose a white brush, but then turn the opacity down and uh, just add a little bit of blue under her arm there. And if it goes too far, I just go back. All right, the last thing that I wanna show you guys is the new Tone Wheels panel. This is Pi's submitted image here, his losing image. This will look familiar to anyone who's familiar with uh, video editing color panels. Everything is separated into highlights, midtones, and shadows. These sliders on the right are brightness, and you can see if I start messing with the brightness here of the shadows, it's only affecting the dark areas of the scene. This is a very bright image, so if I grab the brightness of the highlights, you can see it's affecting only the highlights. We can do the exact same thing with colors in the highlights, midtones, and shadows as well. Something that's very popular right now, everybody wants to add teal into the shadows and then uh, warms into the either midtones or highlights. So if I grab this and I start pushing the shadows towards the blue area, you can see that the shadow areas that used to be black now have a blue tint. I could pull it to the other side, make it orange, but I'll, I'll pull it over here. Now, the farther that I push it over to the edge, the more saturation you're adding into those shadows. And I can either do it manually by pushing it up here, or I can let go of that and grab this, and this might make it a little bit more precise, adding that saturation in or taking it away. I think somewhere right in there looks pretty good. Now, as I add the blue to these shadows, I think it's kind of killing a lot of the color that we have on her face. So I think her skin tones are probably gonna fall within the mid-tones, uh, maybe some in the highlights on her dress and stuff, but let's play with these mid-tones first. I'm gonna push these back towards orange here and just kind of warm this up a little bit. And you can see we can go way too far. So you just wanna play with this a little bit here. I think that looks pretty good. And then let's play with the highlights. So if you're accustomed to using LUTs or plugins or filters, they're all doing something like this. For the most part, they're usually doing something different to the shadows than they are to the highlights or the midtones or vice versa. And that difference is what makes the images have a look. 
Many movies today have the dark blues in the shadows and the warmer tones in the highlights. Other movies are extremely desaturated, except for some very specific colors. And then other movies are very vibrant and over the top, and they will exaggerate certain colors more than others. This tone wheel panel allows you to do that. Well, that wraps up this tutorial. If you're looking for software that is a heck of a lot more affordable than Photoshop and Lightroom, or maybe you're looking for one program that can do it all, you don't wanna to have to jump between different software, definitely check out ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate 2021. That's what I'm using right here. Click on the link in the description. You can check it out with the free trial totally for free. See if you like it before you buy it. I think you're gonna be impressed.